Okay, so today we are starting deductive reasoning. We've already done inductive reasoning. That was whenever we like continued our sequences of like the list of all prime numbers, uh, the list of uh, perfect squares, the list of perfect cubes. All of those were our inductive reasoning. Okay, deductive reasoning is the process of reasoning logically and drawing a conclusion from given facts and statements. So when we did our inductive, we were observing and drawing conclusions. Deductive, we're not drawing conclusions. We are using facts and statements that I'm giving you to then make a statement, okay, or draw a conclusion. Okay, given a conditional statement, if the hypothesis is true, then the conclusion is true. Okay, our symbol for this is if P implies Q. So that's nothing new, right? If P, then Q. And then I say P. Then you know these three dots that make a triangle that symbol, that means therefore. Okay, you will see that a lot in math, in proofs. Therefore, Q. So if we make a statement, if P, then Q, and then we say P, that means that then Q is correct or true. Okay, so we're still going to underline our P our if, our hypothesis, underline our Q, our conclusion, and then we're going to go from there, okay? So, if Mark saves $30, so if Mark saves $30, that's my P, that's my hypothesis. My conclusion is then he can buy a new video game. That's your Q. Then it says, Mark saves $30, so it's saying P. So P happens. If P happens, then that means Q is going to happen. So if he does save $30, what's going to happen? He can buy his new video game. If a quadrilateral is a rhombus, so a quadrilateral is a rhombus, that's your P. Then it is also a parallelogram, that's your Q, that's your conclusion. Okay, so then I say quadrilateral ABC is a rhombus, so that's your P. Because notice, do these match? Quadrilateral is a rhombus. Do these match? That means I'm then saying P is true. So if P is true, then what does that mean? Q is true. So I can say quadrilateral A, B, C, D is also a parallelogram. If 
you are 18 years old. So you are 18 years old. That's your P. Then you can register to vote. You can register to vote. That's your Q. Olivia is not 18 years old. Is that my P? What's P say? And then we're saying Olivia is not. So is that my P? No, because it says you're not 18 years old. So can I make the conclusion that she can register to vote? No. No. So we say this is not, or no valid conclusion. We cannot make conclusion from this given information. If your P's don't match, you can't make the conclusion. We can't say the conclusion is true. Okay. The sum, if the sum of the measures of two angles is 90, so that's your P, then they are complementary angles. That's your Q. So the measure of angle J is 59, 59, 58, and the measure of angle K is 32. So that's my given. Does that mean that they have a sum that's 90? Yeah. Okay, so this matches my P, right? Does that match my P? Yeah. yeah. So since it matches my P, can I then conclude Q? Mm -hmm. Yes, that means my conclusion is true. They are complementary. If you plan to attend prom, so that's your P, then you must purchase a ticket. That's your Q. If you plan to attend prom, then you have to purchase a ticket. Sarah purchases a prom ticket. Does that match my P? No. No, it matches my Q. Q. So can I make a valid conclusion then? In order to make a valid conclusion, P has to imply Q, and then I have to tell you P. Did I tell you P? No, no I told you Q. Q. So this is no valid conclusion. And let's actually underline the Sarah purchases a prom ticket. That's your Q. So again, that's why this does not work. P implies Q, then I state Q. That does not mean that Q is correct. Okay, I cannot make a conclusion about that. Okay, then we have this fun word. Law of syllogism. We'll go with that's how you say it. Could be right. Okay, so this allows you to draw a conclusion from two conditional statements in which the conclusion Of the first statement is the hypothesis of the second statement. Okay, so what does this look like? P implies Q. And then Q implies R. Therefore, P implies R. I give you a statement whose hypothesis gives you a conclusion, and then that conclusion gives you, is your hypothesis and gives you another conclusion. We can jump straight to my first hypothesis gives me my second conclusion. This is kind of like substitution, right? If P then Q, I know Q then R, so P would then imply R. Okay, we good with that? Okay, so if it is Saturday, that's your P. That's my first given, my first hypothesis. Then, Jake has a baseball tournament. That's your Q. First hypothesis, and then your conclusion. OK? 
Okay. The next sentence says, if Jake has a baseball tournament. Is that my cue? Yeah. Jake being at the baseball tournament? Mm -hmm. Yes. So there's my cue. Then he will need a, he will need to pack his lunch. There's your R. Does this follow the pattern? If P, then Q. If Q, then R. Yes. So then we can say, if P, if it is Saturday, then he will need to pack his lunch. Good for the next one. We ready? If any number is divisible by 12, that's your P. Then is divisible by 6. That's your Q. Does my next sentence start with Q? It is divisible by 6? Yes. Then it is divisible by 3. That's your R. So does this follow the pattern? If P, then Q. If Q, then R. So then we can say, if P, then R. If a number is divisible by 12, then it is divisible by 3. Okay, number eight. If a quadrilateral is a square, so a quadrilateral being a square, that's your P. Then it is a rectangle. That's your Q. Does my next sentence start with it being a rectangle? No. If a quadrilateral is a rectangle, yes. So it is a rectangle. That's your Q. Then it has four right angles. That's your R. So if P, then Q. If Q, then R. Does it follow that pattern? Yes. So then can we say if P, then R? Yep. So if a quadrilateral is a square, Then it has four right angles. Okay, number nine. If it is sunny this weekend, so it is sunny this weekend, that's your P. Then you will go boating. That's your Q. If it is sunny this weekend, that's your what? P. Then you will wear shorts. That's your R. So does this follow the pattern? If P, then Q. If Q, then R? No. So we say no valid conclusion. shop at Target. That's your P. Then you use your Target red card. That's your Q. If you do not use your Target red card, is that your Q? No, because your Q says you use your Target red card. This says you do not use your Target red card. So is that your Q? Nope. 
So what do we say? No valid conclusion. No valid conclusion. Okay, last one of these. If it snows, that's your P, then school will be canceled. That's your Q. Um, if school is canceled, is that your Q? Is your conclusion your hypothesis now? Yep, so that's your Q. Then the students will need to make up a day of school. That's your R. That's sad, guys. They don't want to make up days. Okay, so does this follow the pattern? If P, then Q. If Q, then R? Yep, so then we can say if P, then R. So if it snows, then... Students will need to make up a day of school. Good? <coughs> so we learned our law of detachment. That's if P then Q, I tell you P, therefore Q. We learned our law of syllogism. That's if P, then Q. If Q, then R. Therefore, if P, then R. Okay? So we're going to read these statements, and we are going to determine if it is law of detachment or law of syllogism. Okay? So, if I drive over the speed limit, label that your P. Then, what color did I use? Then, I will get a ticket. That's your Q. I drove the speed limit. Is that your P or your Q? Your P. I got a ticket. That's your... And when I put R, that's your P. And then that's your Q. So which one does this follow? Law of detachment. If P, then Q. P, therefore Q. So this is law of detachment. Okay, if Amanda goes to the restaurant, that's your P. Then she orders a hamburger, that's your Q. She orders a hamburger. That's your what? Q. Um, uh, then she gets fries. That's your R. If Amanda goes to the restaurant, that's your P. Then she orders fries. That's your R. Which one does this follow, guys? Law of syllogism. Do y'all think you can do the next four on your own? Okay, so number three, I got invalid. Did y'all get invalid? Okay, it was P implies Q, P implies R. R implies Q. That does not follow either of them. Next one I got law of detachment. P in place, Q, P, therefore Q. Okay with that? Next one invalid, it's P in place, Q, Q, then P. That doesn't follow either of them. Okay, so that one's invalid. And then law of syllogism, P in place, Q, Q implies R, therefore P implies R. Good? We have questions about any of those three? Nope. Okay, that. What do we get for seven? Invalid. It didn't follow any of them. Okay, what do we get for eight? Law of detachment. It follows the if P then Q, P, therefore Q. 
And then what about 9? Invalid. If P, then Q. Q, then P. That doesn't follow the law of detachment. We good? Okay. Now we're going to write some of our own statements. We have one, two, three, four, five, six of these statements, and we are going to write four conditional statements that are using law of syllogism. Okay? So, let's just start with A. Okay? If a quadrilateral is a square, and stop there. Okay, if a quadrilateral is a square, then it has four right angles. Do any of these start with it has four right angles? Do any of these start that it has four right angles? D. 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 So since my first conclusion matches my second hypothesis, I can go from my first hypothesis to my second conclusion. So I can say then what? Then it is a rectangle. Then it is a rectangle. So that was A to D. Now before we write B, let's look. B says if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then its opposite sides are parallel. Do any of my other ones say its opposite sides are parallel? E. E says its opposite sides are parallel? Pro F. F. So can I go from B to F? Yeah. Yep, because this conclusion matches this hypothesis. So I can go from my first hypothesis to my second conclusion. So if a quadrilateral is a rhombus, then F, which says, then it is a parallelogram. So that was uh, what? B to F. Are we okay with how I'm doing this, guys? You can pick any of them. You just have to make sure that whatever the conclusion is, is a hypothesis in another statement. Okay, so let's go to C. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite angles are congruent. Do any of these have a hypothesis of its opposite angles are congruent? No, so we can't start with C then. So let's go to D. If a quadrilateral has four right angles, then it is a rectangle. Do any of these have a hypothesis of it being a rectangle? Yeah, which one? E. e. So we can go from D to E. So if a quadrilateral has four right angles, it's a rectangle. So if it's a rectangle, then its opposite sides are congruent. Okay, so that was what? Uh, D to E. Okay, so let's see if we can start with E. If a quadrilateral is a rectangle, then its opposite sides are congruent. Do any of these say the opposite sides are congruent? No, so let's go to F. If the opposite sides of a quadrilateral are parallel, then it is a parallelogram. Do any of these say it being a parallelogram? C, so I can go from F to C. So if the side, sorry, the opposite sides of 
of a quadrilateral are parallel. The quadrilateral is parallel. Or then it's a parallelogram. So if it's a quadrilateral is parallelogram, then it's opposite angles are congruent. So that was what? F to C. Oh, y'all can't even see as I'm writing. We good? We feel okay about this? How many of us are happy that our logic unit is done? 